be going over does not need any introduction. The number of mobile phones are supposed to be as many as number of people sitting over here. In this hall, if we have X number of people, we will have more than that. Some people have two also. So we will have more than that number of mobile phones. So this is something like which is a part of the human body. It is like an appendage of the human body. So we used to study that we have 206 bones and that forms the human anatomy. So now we add in our anatomy the 206 bones plus a mobile phone. It is always there stuck to the body, it is always there stuck to the person. So this which has become a day to day in part of our human system, we use it for what we call a simple call. But there is nothing like a simple call. The whole call you can see is only when you have some amount of base stations, you have a signal and that signal goes back to the person. So if we do not have these towers around, we do not have these signals around, our mobile phone is actually worthless. It is of no use. So we just don't think of the mobile phone as a single unit of speaking or communicating. But how that whole network occurs when you make a call, it goes to one tower, then it goes to the base station, that searches out where the person you are going to try to reach and then it reaches to the person. So it's a whole ring that makes this mobile what you can say sustainable. <laughs> In our day-to-day -day life, you will see that if you go to any restaurant, you go to any CCD cafeteria, you see a couple sitting, they are both looking all into their mobiles only. So there is a lot of interpersonal relationships which may get affected. You will see people crossing the road, driving cars and you will find them with the mobile. So this is a very common sight that you may find. You may find families sitting for dinner, but each member of the family is looking into his mobile and having. So what we need today is more on offline communication. And offline communication is what is needed and that is affecting also the social fabric of our... We don't make friends today, we add friends. And this has changed the whole perspective. Of course, you are all aware of the social problems occurring with this sort of a communication. You are all aware of the accidents that occur. I have seen so many of them who have even in our hospital, there is an automatic lift which closes and the gentleman is entering into the lift and suddenly the door closes, looking into the mobile and he's hit by it. I've had some of them coming with fractured nasal bones while texting, walking on the streets, falling down. So there are, as I said, there are social problems. There are mechanical problems where we encounter injuries. In fact, I've read in one of the papers where a girl was on the mobile, walking on the tracks she could not hear the sound of the train coming. So probably all or whatever. So things happening with them may be physical also. And this has become a day to day whatever routine as far as mobile is concerned in our life. Or you can watch where you're going, but you can't do both. And now you don't have to. Thanks to guiding hands. At guiding hands, we understand how important it is to stay connected when you're on the road. Simply request a guiding hand, and within seconds, we'll be at your side, ready to guide you to your destination. Let us navigate your world so you can navigate the web. Your guiding hand is the that things close to you look up. We look out for you so you can keep an eye on the things that matter. <laughs> so since it has become a part of our day-to-day -day activity, this was to summarize actually how it has become a part of our life and we go on to, as I said initially, a fo mobile phone is not only a mobile phone, it involves a lot of other things happening along with it which <laughs> we will today discuss. Now there are various studies which have been shown that whether this mobile phone is harmful or not. You get a lot of contrary views to it. Somebody says that it's fine, somebody says that it is harmful and therefore naturally you get confused and definitely these studies show us over here that 
industry funded studies and the studies which are done independently they show a marked difference so it, therefore it tends to confuse the consumers as to what is the actual situation behind the mobile phone if you see yesterday i was seeing tv news and when i saw different channels there were three four channels english channels which i was watching the news each of them was showing studies where their channel is number one you know it is the best it is seen by most people so naturally you wonder when you see four channels and all of them show you that according to survey we are leaders so naturally how much would you depend on these studies how much would you depend would have to be taken with a pinch of salt basically there are certain tips which we are going to do to reduce this sort of a radiation which will come to it later now as far as the study was concerned this was a study where the two big known professors who were involved to study the radiation results they gave the reports to a certain company which was called motorola and because these studies were not favorable these reports were never published and they were asked to leave so lot of these things happening make you realize that there is something beyond these studies itself coming back to our own country you have the department of telecom government of india they have laid down certain guidelines and regulations as far as mobile radiation is concerned and if we see point number 8 and all clearly they themselves have said that preferably use a wired line preferably use a landline i mean dot did not require to put in this clause as far as telecommunication is concerned now when these towers are set for communication there are certain rules to it that they have to be placed on buildings which are very tall they have to be placed at a certain distance from each other they have to have a certain limit as far as the radiation or emf is concerned but obviously nothing is followed up over here you will find even three story two story structures having towers you find number of service since we have in our country we have lot of service providers everybody has their tower all close to each other and there is no control on the amount of level of radiation or wattage which they are affected because there is no check on to it basically in 2011 the who has classified electromagnetic field radiation as a potential carcinogen that means it may cause cancer so it comes in the 2b classification as double, according to who so we do not say that it causes cancer but at the same time you cannot say it's totally safe so it's in the 2b category of course lot of studies in the times and all have shown how wifi affects our body now coming again locally to our place this place all of you have seen we have just clicked it from the signal i mean this is the haji ali signal where you must be crossing day in day out you have identified the place this is a ground floor structure so not a tall story building no tower and on the ground floor structure you find these towers placed and we are fortunate that one of our very concerned citizens just went down and was while crossing it measured and we found the radiation levels so high so there is no restriction as far as to what should be the limit of any tower to be put and this is just close by to the hospital itself now when we come to certain phones in their own manual they have given certain points and which are dug deep inside their manual this is the famous of course blackberry and when you see blackberry they clearly mention that you should use the phone as directed and there is no assurance for, based on any future studies that they may harm you and as well as if it causes any hearing loss etc is not their responsibility i mean they have all put it in their manual itself now basically what happens with this radiation this radiation always depends on the nature of waves you have the frequency amplitude which we'll all you know go into later 
So whenever our signal comes to the person who is making the call, some amount of radiation occurs to the ear, to the skull bones and this, how it affects the body, we would see in the coming slides. Now, our cell phone, what we are concerned over here, falls in the certain frequency which is similar to the frequency of microwaves. We are all aware of microwaves and we all know how microwaves causes some amount of damage. It is not good for our body or our system. And especially nowadays you know where heating in the microwave in plastic containers also may be carcinogenic etc. You all, all are aware of it. And so our cell phone falls in the frequency range where the microwave frequency falls. So it is similar to and it's a non-ionizing radiation similar to the radiation of a microwave but of course at a lesser level, much lesser level. However at the same time you don't put your head into the microwave, you are out of the microwave. Here we are constantly using it against our head. Till we do not know what used to happen. Even the people used to, the doctors used to do x-rays, you should not have any cover because we did not know that radiation is affecting the body till certain things happened later and now not only they wear a radiation, the lead sheet, they also use a TLD which absorbs radiation. In fact, most of the radiologists, in fact today morning in the OT I was just noticing many of the surgeons, urologists, orthopedic surgeons, all of them are wearing a TLD and every three months they send it to BIRC to see how much radiation has been absorbed in it and to you know remove that. So, it is, uh, I don't know, I do not know the full form. The apparatus is called as TLD. TLD. It absorbs the radiation. What is it, Dr. Dipali? It's total lethal dose. Yeah. It indicates the amount of radiation. radiation. Total lethal dose. So that is calculated by BRC. So even now, since we are aware that how radiation can cause an effect, many of the doctors are using this. So actually what happens, again coming back to our mobile phone, that when the problem is not having a single intensity, single frequency, single wavelength affecting us. It is the fluctuating frequency, fluctuating wavelength, fluctuating amplitude affecting to us. So when we get a call, there is a certain increase in the frequency when we keep it on standby mode. When the phone starts ringing, you can see it goes up. When we start speaking, then when we are listening it goes down. Again at the end of the call it is different. So normally it is not at a single flat form, it constantly changes and that change is harmful to us. A certain experiment, I will come to this later. Now the hazards of cell phone have been very nicely summarized by the slide where we definitely find people having lot of problems as far as tinnitus is concerned, headache, imbalance, as far as my ENT is concerned, eye problems are there, people have even little amount of you know, genetic disturbances which we come to the DNA changes that occur later. So the cell phone radiation falls in the wavelength of the microwave and if you see ovens use a very high wattage cell phones use a much smaller wattage as the antennas are still less. So these affect the human body which can be seen in form of an experiment. Mr. Munshi has just done this experiment in his house where the microwave water is used to for this plant and after a week you can see what happens to the plant as compared to a plant which is given normal tap water. So when we say that the cell phone radiate EMF and microwave is the same non-ionizing radiation level, you can infer that how a microwave would affect a plant, there definitely would be some effect as far as the human body is concerned. So this very amply shows you and this experiment is done by our colleague only and it's done in the vicinity itself. So there's nothing, uh, you know, you require 
extra a laboratory to prove that this is harmful. So now electromagnetic radiation just showing you the spectrum and in this spectrum what all comes in the spectrum are these Wi-Fi signals it, even the cordless phone, in fact cordless phones are more damaging so one should definitely avoid cordless phones over this so cordless phones, Wi-Fi are all having these microwave and we have tested in the sense even with the cordless phones the radiation and the radiation levels are very high, very high with cordless phones. Doctor, cordless landline? Sorry? Cordless landline? Yes, yes, any landline. But cordless, a wireless thing is much more harmful. So even a cordless phone is harmful. It has higher radiation compared to mobile? Yes, yes. yes. Oh. He's measured it also. Ten I mean, times. Ten times, yeah. Oh. Ten times higher. So you should go in for a wired line like the good old days. Okay. So basically, and that is also what the government is saying and what is saying, not we. Now, cell phones also emit these microwave radiations. In fact, we see on the net a lot of you know experiments have been done where popcorns and all these are wrong actually. So I mean, it really doesn't happen. So these have been proved to be wrong. Now I would, as an ENT, what I have seen, I would just like to put in front of you that these are different patients who have come. I was using the phone on one side, this lady, I mean, I'm from Phoenix, and I had a hearing loss, so then I started using it on the other side, and when the other side also, the hearing came down, she came to us. So similarly, in fact, uh, when uh, I was interviewed by one of the papers, like Times of India and all, so I gave, it asked me, do you have patients? So I gave them numbers, and they spoke to them, and then of course brought out articles on this. We had people who have used it even for a single call. He said it's a very important business call. I spoke for an hour and I developed tinnitus after that. Giddiness, headaches. In fact, there's, I've got two of them who just across this building on an enterprise where this boy says that I've got two phones. In one phone I get severe headache while the other phone I do not get it. So even phone to phone makes a difference as far as this is concerned. One gentleman, this has actually happened with me in the clinic, has told me that I used it on one side, I started developing ringing and then some hearing problem, so I started using it on the other side. And I told him that if you had a problem on one side, why did you use it on the other side? He said, me, I have got my business whole day, I have to be on the phone and I have to use the phone whole day. But I said, if one side is affected, why should you use it on the other side and that too whole day? So the answer which I got was, he said, Mare paase to unlimited talk time che. <laughs> <laughs> so thing is, it becomes very difficult, you know, to convince people not to use, because there are certain schemes which are there, which tend to make them use the mobile round the clock actually. Should we put it on the speaker board? Yeah, we come to it. So this was of course where, uh, you know, the, the last, uh, I told you the page, Patients were interviewed and uh, you know they gave articles about the mobile phone. So normally how the mobile phone radiation penetrates the brain, you can see that the difference between a 5 year old, 10 year old and an adult, this is because of the thickness of the skull that the radiation affects the child much much more and therefore it has to be an absolute no-no for children concerned. And when you take thermogenic images, these images definitely show you that a 15 minute talk would result in so much absorption of heat as far as the temporal bone is concerned. So these images itself give a guideline to the heat which is absorbed inside and then the damage that occurs. Now these certain the towers which are I told you on lower structures which have to be banned as far as you know the radiation concerned to the people around is in one of the close vicinities, we have one of our present ministers of industry, his house. They also have kept towers of the house, but so that most of them may not be legal also, they're covered up. They're covered up not for show, but to, not to show others that we are using towers over here. So when it's opened up for maintenance, it gets exposed. 
So the towers are now camouflaged by many and that camouflage itself means that there is something to hide from. Our Prime Minister himself has said that how non-ionizing radiation is harmful and we have to definitely, I mean, take care because it will not only damage the generation, but generations to come, it would be harmful. We have already seen a Bhopal happening and unfortunately, one of the gentlemen whose uh, picture here is Mr. Gokhale. He was the chairman of Union Carbide. And of course, when this tragedy happened of Bhopal, his own wife suffered from cancer and he's fighting a case against the tower which was there in front of his building. No, he won't. He <laughs> fought for the case and he has removed those and, bombs, yeah. which have landed upon just now. Yeah. So now, Karma, at Carmichael Road, when he stays. So he has got towers removed from the building in front of his house. So now those towers are out. But he is the same gentleman who was chairman of Union Carbide when that tragedy had occurred. So I mean, how things happen in the lifetime. Now we have different levels which are considered to be safe as far as radiation is concerned. You can see the different countries Russia, Italy, Poland and all, they have a limit of 100 while whatever the frequency, the limit is 100 milliwatts while in our country we have limits which you can see it changes with every frequency at much higher levels. This is again to give you an idea as to the safety levels which are there between India and the US. Now driving again is of course affected with mobile users, a very common sight which you would see on a road will be even people on two wheelers with one hand on the mobile and we are all aware of drunk driving. Now it is seen that when you are texting or you are on a mobile, your reaction time is like having alcohol. So as drunk driving is dangerous, studies show that moment you are texting or your mind is on the mobile, the reflex becomes that slow and it is similar to drunk driving. It is as dangerous as drunk driving and therefore for any driving there will be no exception using a mobile. As I earlier said, most of the safety tips are all buried deep into the manuals. We do not go down and see what is written. As I said, Blackberry itself has written that we are not responsible for this, that we are not responsible for anything which happens in the future. If you see any iPhone, you put on your phone flash 07 that uh, star and flash, you will get, get your SAR value and they too say that you have to keep the phone some 3 eighth of an inch away from your body. Even iPhone has written, don't keep it touching to your body. The code for SAR value? It is 07, I mean you put flash in front, flash behind and star. Is different for Androids and one for iPhone. So you can know the value, SAR value of your mobile phone with that. Another thing what happens is now the blue light also which is emitted. Yes. Lot of people at night, I mean we are, the new generation is more of nocturnal animals I think, where at night when it is dark they keep on using it in the blue light and this blue light itself not only damages the retina, cataracts are supposed to occur much earlier now and it damages the macula also. Just last week, there were uh, reports in our local papers where the professor of ophthalmology JJ Hospital, Professor Lane, you must have heard, he, it was his statement and how you know people lose their vision. As far as uh, ENT is concerned, we see more of now in a lot of people getting parotid gland swellings, parotid tumors that have increased and these parotid tumors they have been studied in Israel where they have shown that they have tripled as far as uh, the last decade is concerned. Text neck, text fingers you will be aware where the moment we bend our head the amount of load which comes on the neck becomes much more, you can see from 40 pounds to 60 pounds and they develop text necks or text fingers. In fact, unfortunately what has happened, 
the number of people with neck problems <coughs> increased and the some of the physiotherapists have given the treatment of this as now what you do is you keep the phone not like that down you keep the phone on top look up and text so when you do that you treat your text neck but you will not leave your mobile so the that is the cure as far as you know text neck is concerned now who is at risk as i showed you earlier it's always the child which is at greater risk since the thickness of the skull is less and this is the study showing the microwave radiation which is absorbed from the cell phones at the age of 8 years and 34 years this is specific absorption rate and you will follow this that certain females used to keep the phone in the bra pocket where the heat radiation had occurred they start developed tumors and this was the study where typically it was these runners etc used to keep it for 4 4 hours and they have developed tumors over here so these are eight cases eight plus cases where two of them had metastases also of the same site same area where the phones have been used then different studies in rats how the damage has occurred you can see the different tests in this where electromagnetic field groups where you know they are made to run in a maze and they lose direction it similarly today as you see when you have towers over buildings you will not find birds there you won't find sparrows there there was a old uh, messenger which was the pigeon and in sweden they had a study where they used to send pigeons from one end they used to travel 200 miles and reach to the same spot but when they had to cross areas of towers the pigeons also lose sense of direction and these to go away wire so direction sense all that was lost is lost by these birds this is again damage to the rat testes because of the emf radiation and now we come to the test as far as the human beings are concerned where cell phone exposure damages the sperm motility and the sperm numbers also so definitely there are a lot of experiments which have shown that as the cell phone use increases the sperm count has gone down so typically from no use you come to 4 hours a day use and they have tested it where the sperm count reduces as far as the mobile use is concerned population so, yeah but even the dna changes so that remaining population may be worse sir so this is of course again experiment showing how increase enzyme type with dna dna damage what i just told sir that would occur and this only thing we would come to know much later and later not immediately so that dna damage would affect the next generation probably we all know about the bomb of hiroshima and nagasaki we thought it destroys it destroys everything at one go but we never knew that later on it radiation will affect cause dna changes and cause mutations and that would affect us and that all we came to know much later after 40 years so this these changes which occur would not only affect presently but the next generation it would affect much more so in most of the studies they show that it does not increase brain cancer but then after a usage of more than 10 years then we start we we'll start seeing all these changes which is occurring this i just covered to you that you know parotid and salivary gland tumors are more as far as you know usage of mobile even the dental associations have said that excessive use of mobiles have led to more of these cavities etc dental problems which occur so all these are in fine prints and these fine prints are never read by any of us before using any mobile or whichever application we do there are lot of air tubes headsets get and they call it rf safe radio frequency safe so if there was nothing causing it why have such things so what do we do we have to see that we have a mobile of a lesser sar sensory absorption rate we don't keep it close to the body the normal level acceptable level is about 1.6 watts per kg 
So the lesser the SAR value, the better it is. Keep it away from your body. Then preferably use a speaker phone, a wired headset and carry the phone away from your body. The moment you're not using a phone, preferably at night, etc., better keep it off. Don't keep it next to your bedside. Off the Wi-Fi whenever you're not using it. Don't keep the Wi-Fi on for 24 hours. So especially when we are traveling, do not speak on the phone because what happens, there's one tower here, one tower is ahead. Again, the signal changes and as the signal would change, that change would be more damaging to the air. So while traveling, don't use it. I've seen a lot of people using it in the lifts, etc. They are all covered with, you know, steel and all. Signal is very low. It's very damaging to the ear because the radiation will be much more if you're using it in lifts, etc. So these things have to be, you have to be very careful. Children absolutely know below the age of 15 years of age. This is again, of course, times where uh, API, Association of Physicians of India had done studies and shown that prolonged cell phone radiation, their uh, effects on the human body, so API. So basically, we prefer to use it only when you have a strong signal. When the signal is weak, do not use a phone because it will be more damaging to you and higher radiation. Don't cover the phone totally. Keep it open so that, again, the radiation becomes less. So typically, we have Blackberry and the pacemaker which I have written that keep it 20 centimeters from the pacemaker and do not keep carry the blackberry device in the breast pocket so these are blackberry the notifications which are there now certain studies where the australian government itself has said that parents should limit their children exposure to the mobile phone wi-fi should not be used in schools the french national assembly is passed now, with one of the recent studies, it has seen that 75% of the kids under the age of 8 use mobile phones. It's so high. 75%. This is uh, the picture of actually my phone, which I said I did 07 flash and I got this. So, it shows you, but then you have to dig into it and see it, that what are the problems associated with this. In France, there is a place, Lyon, where there are boards, billboards on the road where they say no way for mobiles for the children. So the city is free of mobiles as far as kids are concerned totally. The effect of this also comes on very many insurance companies which have stopped covering damages which are affecting the mobile phone. So see they have also some reason to come out with such you can say clauses, they have strings attached to it. So if there are damages covering cell phones, they will not pay for it. So all the compensations will not, they are not responsible. Now it was like tobacco. In the earlier years, tobacco was supposed to be very good for health. Tobacco was very healthy. And that you can get an idea from most of the old ads. They used to show that all doctors prefer to smoke tobacco. These are camel cigarettes and all. So therefore, when we did not know that this was troublesome, we have, I mean it was ignorance. And again, it took years to know how tobacco causes cancer, tobacco is damaging and therefore it is occurred. So we did not know that radiation is damaging, we did not know tobacco is damaging, we did not know asbestos is damaging, it was used so much. When we knew, of course later on things change. So what I mean to say is, if we do not know it now, maybe after 10 years, 20 years, things will get exposed, will be will worsen. And that is a time when it may be too late. So typically you find a lot of children using toys, they advertise it. In various places now, even in New York, in Colorado and all, they have banned cell phones for children below 12 years of age. And since they are so used to I think these phones, it becomes very difficult to get a child out of it. This picture is from Matia Hospital only. From our intensive, neonatal intensive care unit, a 28 year old baby. I had operated and after that immediately I went to the I, NICU, neonatal intensive care unit, to see how the child is. The child was busy, you know, watching 
the screen. So thing is, not even a one month old child, but is so used to it, because it was so comfortable that the mother did not want to remove the LED screen in front of the child. So holding the child used to see, you know, here I think you can see Santa Claus or something. So this is our, where the child is not only one month old, not even one month old, and is glued to the TV. So this is actually what is happening. Now, as far as the tower is concerned, this is Professor Girish Kumar who has done the study from Bombay IIT where the maximum amount of damage occurs in this primary lobe of the tower. So those buildings which are in front of ta the tower and form directly into the cone would receive maximum radiation. This is of course the Hajiri thing which I just showed you earlier and ideally antennas should be placed on the top of a tower but probably we do not waste money making a tower we directly place the antenna on the building so ideally what should happen they should be on the top of a tallest building or on the top of a tower but we really don't see any tower now as far as the uh, report on EMF radiation is concerned this is of course uh, they have said that there should be more exposure to the radiation part as far as the mobile phones are concerned and there should be national guidelines, evidence of DMA damage has occurred in heavy users and in every tower, very important, there has to be an indicator to show the radiation level because there is no control on it. You get a better signal, you are more happy with your service provider but there is no control at how much the tower is radiating. So illegal antennas have to be removed. In fact, there was one just close to our hospital at uh, Nana Chok, which was recently removed. There is an overbridge, you know, sky bridge which has come and they had placed it on that sky bridge which was in front of one of uh, the houses. And then since there is no clause, I mean, to place it on the bridge for this, so the municipality had to finally remove it with the help of our friends. So towers have to be located in the tallest buildings away from habituation. Cell phones have to be used with care and illegal antennas should be withdrawn. So basically these are the things which would definitely reduce the radiation. Some of the local things which have happened around us, I have just picked it up, where uh, they have given enough proof that radiation has caused damage at Parla, Juhu, here, Nana Chok at different places and this is Professor Girish Kumar who had uh, done uh, various studies as far as the tower radiation is concerned. Now the number of mobile subscribers are increasing and we are going on to 4G and from 4G we will naturally go on to 5G soon. So the mo with more and more networks, with more and more uh, towers coming up more and more cell phone users, I think the medical issues will not only increase, so we have to be careful as far as using a mobile, only when it is necessary make a call, they should be as short as possible, do not keep it close to your pocket or close to your body, keep it away from it, at night preferably your Wi-Fi phone should be off, whenever a choice use a landline and Turn, do not use it when you are travelling, especially in a lift, a tunnel or a bus or a train or a car. Now when we talked of this, this was the same building where we are talking about, where uh, you know, this was Usha Kiran, I mean at Carmichael Road, where it was directly in face of a building in front because since this is a big high rise, the smaller building in front had towers and that tower fall, fell into the cone which I had just described to you. It fell in the cone or the center and unfortunately on these floors 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th and 10th which were exactly in front of the building in front with towers they had patients with malignancy cancer. But finally of course this got removed but this is you know just to show you a glaring example which is in front of you. So how close the towers should be was a question and it is research has shown that towers should not be within 400 meters as far as you know habituation is concerned because it can cause cancer and just to show you a short video 
is a representative of the cell phone uh, association. Yes, he lived in a house and there was a cell phone tower opposite it. How opposite you at height? Would you be scared? Absolutely not. I, in fact, uh, have a cell tower not too far away. How far? Yeah, How far? Yeah, you know, probably uh, half a kilometer away from uh, where I am. I That's not I the same said. thing as picking up your window and having a so, the one who is uh, the head of the cell operators association, he says, I have it half a kilometer away since you know, 400 is supposed to be the guideline and we have it on our buildings or in front of our house. So, such a paradoxical statement, I mean, you know, will make you aware. A lot of boards are there, of course, at places where radiation affecting, as I told you, the sperm count, you have that the future is in your hands since it reduces the sperm count. CA breast, again incidence high for keeping the cell phone close to the body. On the various ways have been described which we just discussed how to reduce the radiation. This is a, I think a study at San Francisco. For the gynecologist there is always a the baby safe project which again gives how mothers which are pregnant should keep the cell phone away from their body. So these are different independent entities which have been professing to keep the cell phone away to minimize the radiation and how you can you know basically rim limit radio frequency energy from your cell phone. Again this is Blackberry which is that has see that we are not responsible for the hearing problem, we are not responsible for any you know health issues which may occur in the future. Thank you, thank you very much and I'd like to just thank, uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Mr. Munshi, Prakash Munshi who is the concerned citizen and who has done so much of work as far as the cell phone is concerned. I'd like to thank uh, Juhi Chawla who is the face and who is driving force behind this. Devra Davis I would like to thank the epidemiologist from the US who has done a lot of work. Professor Girish Kumar, who's uh, from Bombay IIT, who has done a lot of work. So Girish Kumar, Munshi, Devra Davis, Jui, etc. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.